See, I wouldn't even be able to enjoy the experience. I'll be racing through to get to the other side. <laughs> you can open your arms and touch both I sides touch of the it. wall. Like. I touch it <laughs> as I'm running. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Shots, React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American Reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us, and, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell, because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're going to start this video off in the beautiful mountains of Appenzell. What I did is I landed in Zurich and I drove an hour to Appenzell. There's this mountain, it's called Schaeffler Mountain, and it is absolutely beautiful. It reminds me of Seseda in the Italian Dolomites. And anyways, to get there, what I did is I took the gondola from Epinalp up. It was about $31 round trip. And then from there, I hiked to Schaeffler, and it took about an hour and you hike up to this restaurant slash lodge. Okay. And um, it's about $45. I'm definitely not wasting our time now. Got some mm -hmm. food to eat after a long ride. All right. Okay. You're not hiking. Well, you are kind of sort of still, but you yeah. won't have to do the majority of the hiking. Right. Just a percentage of it. And you still get views. I like it. Yep. It views looks like food. it's real tiny, though. It's like narrow up there from a distance. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to talk about that. Okay. Night to stay up there. Uh, me and my buddy Danny, we decided to stay up there. It's pretty awesome. And we were able to film the sunset over this beautiful Schaeffler Mountain. That's I mean, crazy. it was incredible. Like one of the coolest sunsets in my life. We were able to whip out the FPV drone. It's not as crowded as other areas in Switzerland. Yeah. And it's just absolutely How beautiful. This lodge was awesome. It was $45 a night. And from the viewpoint, you can see three countries. You can see Germany, Liechtenstein, and Austria. And wow. I mean, it, it was awesome. So I'd highly recommend you visit here. It is just one of the coolest places ever. If you're not staying in the lodge, make sure you make it back by seven to the gondola so you can take a ride down. Also in the area, there's a beautiful lake. You can visit one of the most beautiful restaurants in the world that's located in the side of a freaking cave. I didn't go there because I didn't have time, but if you're in Appenzell, you might as well. So anyways, that is it for Appenzell. Now for our second location, we're gonna head over to probably the most beautiful place in the world, in my opinion, and it is the beautiful town of Lauterbrunnen. This is a valley of over 75 waterfalls. This is where authors such as J.R. Tolkien got inspired for like books such as Lord of the Rings. And when you go there, you're gonna understand because it is just absolutely magical. It's this like little town nestled in waterfall. this just valley with tons of waterfalls. You know, a waterfall. See, our towns is different. Our towns don't look nothing like this. Y'all are literally within nature. Mm-hmm. Well, they, they make like a faucet yeah. where we get and put right. little rocks and leaves around it mm -hmm. and a little trickle of water coming down. It looks nice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it ain't that. Nope. Not at all. No, nope. we have to make a waterfall. Yeah. Y'all got actual waterfall and then the clouds. Oh, my Lord. Just letting nature speak to you. Could you imagine vlogs there? Mm. All Every day. It. Let's go on a walk. All Talk of about it. nothing. <laughs> Talk about nothing. <laughs> it is so green. There's like cows all around and it's just magical. I found this really cool park that had like a ping pong, ping -pong table yeah. and just a bunch of cool things right at the base of the waterfall. We walked around, we went into a co-op store to get the Swiss essentials like the chocolate and uh, Coke and, uh, and we just walked around. We had an awesome time. I mean, it was just such a magical experience. So if you are in Switzerland, I'd highly recommend you go to Lauterbrunnen because it's going to blow your mind. After a lot of brooding, the next day we made the journey to the top of Europe to the infamous place of Jungfrau Juck. I think that's how you say it. But anyways, so we woke up way early. Now, first off, we... I'm really happy that he's showing us places that have locations you can actually go in, like mm -hmm. buildings, restaurants, you know, even hotel stays. Mm -hmm. Classic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're really not going up there for nothing. You get to rest, rest. Like, right. Yeah. I mean, you ain't go up there for nothing. I know, right? <laughs> the views and everything is nice, but you get to lay down if you yes. feel like it, you know? Yeah. And eat. Perfect. 
took the train from Lauterbrunn all the way to Jungfrajok, which is the top of Europe. And we bought our tickets. Normally, during the summertime, it's about $240 per person, but if you go in the morning, it is $120 for the early bird special, so I'd highly recommend you do that to save some money. Um, but anyways, it's, it's quite the train ride up the mountains. You make a few stops, and then you're gonna go through the mountain. Um, halfway through the mountain, you're gonna make a pit stop, and you'll be able to get out, and you can see the glacier. I mean, I've never seen a glacier so close up before. There's a lot of mountaineer people that were making a pit stop because they're actually hiking across this glacier to reach the top, so I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, after that pit stop, you're gonna get back on the train, and you'll make it up to the top, and um, you'll get off, and you'll walk through a bunch of tunnels. It was a little bit confusing for me. But anyways, we got up to this, it's called like the ice plateau, I think, and uh, we were able to get some really cool shots from there and there was no one there because we were the first people up on the train so that was awesome after we went to the top of the junk for jack and we were able to get just awesome views of the whole entire area there was just this really massive glacier um i mean it was just absolutely phenomenal there was a lot of people which i mean it's kind of a downer after that we were able to walk in the glacier tunnels and these are just spectacular it's these tunnels of ice that you're able to walk through and there's just a lot of ice sculptures it's just a really surreal listen the videos y'all be sending in mm -hmm. i don't like heights I, I, god is working on me and i know some of y'all don't like that but god is working on me um and being in tight spaces of ice literally if he jumped his head gonna get hit the center can we talk about how he and just start sleeves? Like, it's not cold in there? Mm, we've been in like a makeshift. We've been in a cave. Thing. I was gonna talk about the ice, what we did for Christmas. It was cold. It was it was creative. They yeah, had they made to it wear, though. But it was cave friendly as well. Like, yeah, 100%. It was real this ice. is not the type of a mountain, though. Right. It's out of a glacier. Come on now. Let us know how that's supposed to be like, because he looked like he ain't in cold. See, I wouldn't even be able to enjoy the experience. I'll be racing through to get to the other side. <laughs> you can open your arms and touch both I sides touch of the it. wall. Like. I touch it <laughs> as I'm running. Man. <laughs> Experience. I mean, you could also walk around outside. We found some other cool places. There's some other activities such as like tubing and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was just a great time up at Junk for Jock. We took the train ride down, we made a little pit stop, and then we headed down to the town Difference. called Wangin. And Wangin is right above Lauterbrunnen, and the only way you can get there is you can only take a train or you can walk there because there are no cars allowed in the city. Wangin is great mm. because you are able to get a view of the Lauterbrunnen Valley that you're not really able to get in the town of Lauterbrunnen. Uh, we went up there, beautiful. So I'd highly recommend making a little pit stop in Wangen if you can. I know the tr tickets from Lauterbrunnen are only like seven or $10 for the train ticket, or you can just hike up. Make sure you go there. So after Wangen, made our way down and we drove over to the other valley up to the infamous town of Grindelwald. Now Grindelwald is one of my favorite places in Switzerland. What I love about Grindelwald is the view of Mount Eiger. It is like one of the biggest mountains I've ever seen. Oh, it is just massive. I was there about two years ago and I hiked to this this really crazy peak. Be able to get some of the coolest drone shots I've ever gotten. I was able to get just brilliant views of Mount Eiger. And also on the other side, there were some really cool lakes I was able to film. So yeah, so I'd highly recommend Look making like a, a stop at Grindelwald. Yeah. You won't regret it. You remember? After oh, you go. Got, got to get shot right there. Oh. You remember, um, dang it, I don't, I don't even know how to bring it up. I don't know, but like, think back to when we first had computers. Okay, okay. Like, early, early. Just back then type of stuff. In 99s and 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, think back to that, like a screensaver. It was everybody had the same screensaver, and it was of some mountains and valley, and mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. know, but that's what that made me think of. It was like a screensaver. Not hundred percent. It's a screenshot you could put it on your phone right now if you wanted to. Yeah, now see, y'all, this don't be a big deal to y'all because y'all be used to it, but to people like us who there's no mountains where we're from. Okay. More like hills. Yeah, hills, hills and forests yeah. and swamps. Like, that's what we're used to. So stuff like this, it's, it's wow. 
to us. Okay. Yeah, just so you look out your seat, out your backyard window and see top stuff like. Right. <sighs> Grindelwald, we headed over to the beautiful lake of Ois Chinesi. Hope I said that right. Located by the city of Kandersteg. Um, it's about a five mile hike round trip. It's a moderate hike, but it is very steep. You're gonna walk up this road. Once you get to the lake, your mind is gonna be blown. I've never seen a lake with such a big backdrop as this lake. I mean, the mountains surrounding it are so huge. Yeah, me and my buddy Danny, we hadn't showered in days. So we took the opportunity to take a dip in the lake, swim around, and just have a good time. I definitely recommend making a pit stop here. After Lake Oishchenesi, we're gonna head over to the west side of Switzerland to the beautiful town of Le Diablere. It's about a two hour car ride from Geneva or about a three hour car ride from Zurich. You'll get to this town and you'll hike to this massive bowl. When I did it, I counted over 15 waterfalls. I mean, it was just blowing wow. my mind. I hiked to the bowl. I was able to get some beautiful drone shots in the meadow. And then I hiked up to the rock and I was able to fly my drone around. I actually almost lost my drone here. I was flying it and it ran out of battery and I did an emergency landing and I had no clue where it was at. Surrounding mountains have the highest peak in western Switzerland. So after Le Diable, we're going to head over to the beautiful city of Geneva. Um, this is one of my favorite cities in Switzerland. I had the opportunity to live here for two months about two summers ago when I did an internship with a human rights groups. I made videos for them. But Geneva is famous for having the United Nations. It's just a really cool place with a lot of action going on. They have the infamous Jet Deu, basically just this giant fountain that shoots water hundreds of feet up in the air. And it's pretty cool. Lake Geneva is awesome. I used to just go swim and hang out there in the evenings. I, I found a sunken bow I used to always swim to. I also found some cool places, jump off the bridges into the water. And I mean, it was just a good time. Highly recommend visiting Geneva if you're in the west side of Switzerland. After Geneva, we're gonna head over to one of my favorite cliff jump spots in Switzerland, to Valle Versasca. So Valle Versasca located in the south side of Switzerland, near the town Lugano, Sorry, is which is cool. just bordered cool, Italy. So you're gonna drive up this little canyon and you're gonna get to Valle Versasca. And what it is, it's these two bridges overhangs one of the most beautiful rivers I've ever seen. It's probably some of the clearest river water in the world. I've been there several times. I love jumping off that bridge, doing some, some backflips, and then I also like to go swim in the water. It is freezing cold, but it's super clear, and it's just a rejuvenating experience. I'd have to say Viver Saska is one of my all-time favorite swimming and cliff jumping locations in the world. If you're in southern Switzerland, make the drive up there and you won't regret it. So now for our final location, we are going to head to the beautiful town of Zermatt. Zermatt is famous for the Matterhorn Mountain. So to get to Zermatt, you can't drive to the city itself. You have to drive nearby and then you'll take a train up because there's no cars in the city. And then you get to town, and you'll be able to see the Matterhorn, and it's just gonna blow your mind. It's so cool. You can take a bunch of gondolas up to the Matterhorn or other surrounding locations. I was being a cheapskate and didn't want to spend sixty to hundred dollars to get to the Matterhorn. I do regret that. So if you are going, I would recommend you do it, um, or get a Swiss pass, and you'll be able to get discounts on the gondolas. What I did is I found a little walking path that allowed me to see the Matterhorn and get beautiful drone shots and also I did some like flips and twists and, and splits in the area. They also have a McDonald's there so definitely recommend going there. You have to see the Matterhorn at least once in your life. But that is it for my top 10 Switzerland video. If you like any of the shots I still- Bruh Switzerland y'all have some of the most like crazy views mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Yes, yes. I very, agree. very nice. Very nice. I agree. There were some things that I would I would try, Lupe. I don't know. My nerves hey. I'll say I would try it, but my nerves will get the best of me. I hold your hand. Do we'll do it together. No, you a jokester. I am, but I'm gonna be serious for you. Okay. Yeah, I see a lot of stuff that I definitely would get involved in. All right. Y'all let us know. What do y'all do Talk for to fun? Us. Yes. Let us know. All right. We hope you guys enjoy this video. Go check out his channel. Yeah, definitely <laughs> go check his channel out. Yeah, of course. Um, you know? But we hope you guys enjoy this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request forms in our description, description box, box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.